Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Anna Wise. I'm the Director of International Recruitment and Associate Dean of Admission here at Hamilton. And I just wanted to say one more time, I know we keep saying it, but congratulations on your admission to Hamilton College. It's a really, really exciting thing. You've worked really hard uh, to, to this point and um, you should be really, really proud of your accomplishment. Now, today we are, have a really great session uh, planned where we're going to be talking about opportunities at Hamilton College for, um, for career advising, for internships, for job opportunities after you graduate from Hamilton. And we're gonna be hearing from a excellent panelist, uh, set of panelists uh, representing one, the student experience, two, the alumni experience, and three, the, uh, the career advisors here at Hamilton College. So hopefully it should be a um, really engaging discussion. Now, if you do have questions, we want to hear from you. So please uh, feel free to use the chat feature um, and or in the Q&A feature. We do have one of two of my colleagues, uh, admission officers who are also supporting today's event. Um, they will be managing the chat feature as well. And if you do have a question, we'll be really happy to address that at the, um, towards the end of the session, we'll be introducing all, any questions that you ask. So with that said, I'm gonna ask for our panelists to introduce themselves, uh, starting with Jafar. Hello everyone, and just would like to echo and say that congratulations one more time to, in uh, getting into Hamilton College. I know th this year's pool was very large, so congratulations, congratulations one more time. So yeah, a little bit about me. Um, my name is Jafar, I'm a senior at Hamilton. I'm from, uh, I'm, I'm a senior and I'm from Tashkent, Uzbekistan. And here at Hamilton, I'm majoring in mathematics and economics. Outside of the classroom, I play on the men's varsity tennis team. I also work for the quantitative and symbolic reasoning, QSR, uh, where I tutor students in math and econ and just help answer any questions they might have with content or uh, homework questions uh, in their subjects. And I also work for the Career Center as a network associate where we're trying to find some ways how to connect connect alumni and students and put up some interesting events that are available for the student body and sometimes alumni as well. And right now, as you can see, like um, I'm in the Science Center. Um, these rooms, in the, like these corner rooms are usually a hot commodity. It's almost impossible to get them during the day. So you have to get here quite early, which I did. It's uh, 8 a.m. So here you can see there's a lacrosse field behind me and then the, the woods and right there that's the that's the admission office okay. so that's where i am yep yep okay <laughs> that's uh thank you so much for showing us around campus i know it can be really challenging oftentimes to get that feeling virtually so it's really cool to see you um on campus and showing us a little bit of this beautiful morning that we have here on the hill so thank you so much for that and did you see me waving did you see me through the window oh yeah Absolutely. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Jafar. Um, Hershina, do you, uh, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Jafar. I missed the campus too. So this is also a treat for me. I really missed it. This is truly a hot commodity. So I struggled to find these rooms when I was on campus. But hi, everyone. Congratulations. Congratulations again. You made it. Uh, this is very exciting time for you all. And um, I'm sure you have all the like, good decisions to make right now. So I hope we can help you as much in this process today. Um, my name is Hershina Rajwam and I'm class of 2019. While I was at Hamilton, I majored in economics and minored in, in math and government. And I also, well, I did quite a few things at Hamilton. Most of my activities was with volunteering. I was uh, an executive member of Havoc, the Hamilton Association for Volunteering outreach and charity. And a team of Hamilton women and I also co-founded On The Move, an organization that works with the refugee community in Utica and just raises awareness in the global refugee crisis. Um, and career-wise, um, I am most interested in research, specifically in economic development research. And that started really early on at Hamilton. During my first two summers, I did a summer research with Professor Hagstrom, Paul, sorry, excuse me, Paul Hagstrom from the economics department. And the research was about refugees and, um, and about the refugee retention rate in Utica. So Utica has a large refugee population, which makes it an amazing city to go in and work with and learn about the people who live there. And it helped me to grow not only academically and help me build a research interest in migration, but it also helped me to grow personally because I would learn every time I would go to Utica, 
I would learn from the people I would meet on their stories of resilience and strength. And that really informed on the move as well as the club, but also my research interest right now. So uh, before I came to Hamilton and during Hamilton, I was really interested in international development, but now my, I am interested in the intersection of international development and migration. So I really sit on track with the research, with an interest in research and during Hamilton, during my junior year, I also did an internship at a research lab at the University of Chicago. And that was made possible through uh, some internship funding through the Career Center. And after that, that experience was centered on youth policy and was a great transition to my role right now. Right now, I'm a data analyst at the Youth Policy Lab at the University of Michigan. And what I do is I try to evaluate programs that cater to youth and the younger generation, even before they're born sometimes. So some programs that we evaluate are maternal infant health programs and other programs could be uh, summer youth employment programs or mental health programs in high schools. Um, so the Urban Labs experience was a nice transition to youth policy lab, but I must say I'm very excited to go back to international development research in a few months because I'll be going back to Chicago for graduate studies. Yay, congratulations, that's so exciting. What are you gonna be studying in graduate studies? I'll be doing a master's in public policy with a certificate, with a certificate in research methods. That is fantastic, congratulations. I know you. you've gotta be so excited for those next steps. And Hershina, can you just remind us um, just where, where are you from originally? Oh wow, yeah, I totally <laughs> forgot about that. So I'm from Mauritius. It's a small island of the Chris of Madagascar. Thank you, thank you. Wonderful. And as I said, we are really, really fortunate to be joined um, by a student and alum and also two of our uh, very, very strong career advisors. I'd ask them to uh, introduce themselves next. Uh, Lisa and David. David? <laughs> you want to okay. say David? I was going to say Baker before Bell in oh, terms of the alphabet, but I'll go. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is David Bell. I'm one of the career advisors at Hamilton. Um, truth be known, I've been at Hamilton for over 20 years and have had the wonderful fortune of working with many, many international students. And one of the things that continues to motivate me is students like Jafar and Hershina that just are amazing. They've done amazing things. And I think you'll find that to be true with Hamilton students in general. Uh, they're bright, motivated, ambitious. Um, and challenge me every day uh, to come into the office with new ideas, new possibilities, and that uh, is really what keeps me going. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the role of the career advisor a little bit later on, but welcome. And uh, I was gonna say, great to see you all, but I'm not seeing anybody, but uh, I know you're out there. It's one of the challenges of virtual uh, setup, yeah. right? Uh, so Lisa. Oh, we can't hear you right now, Lisa, unfortunately. We have some, we've been having some audio issues today. I'm sorry for that. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we can, we still can't hear you, Lisa, at this point. I'm really sorry for that. Um, technology, tech issues. Um, and uh, while we, except we were able to hear you earlier, so maybe we'd be able to check some of the adjustments um, that you have, and we'll come back to you and be able, really happy to introduce you. Lisa also is one of our wonderful colleagues in the Career um, Services Center who works very closely with international students. So um, we're gonna come back to Lisa in just a moment, but um, thank you, thank you. Real live time and sometimes tech issues arise. Um, now, uh, with that said, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, as, as mentioned, if you do have questions for today's panel, um, we are really, really happy to answer those questions. So feel free to use the Q&A box and some of my admissions colleagues um, who are also logged in um, will be helping us to pass those uh, questions off to panelists. So we want to hear from you. We want to make sure we're answering those questions that you have. Now, with that said, um, my first question um, that we kind of prepared for today was for Hershina and for Jafar. Um, so a lot of our students here have already found Hamilton. They've all already found Hamilton and been admitted, which is exciting. But can you talk to us a little bit about your process? Um, how did you choose Hamilton? How did you find Hamilton? What made you decide, yes, this is where I'm going to enroll? Um, maybe we start with Jafar. Yeah, totally. Um, so yeah, I went to summer camp uh, in New Hampshire prior to Hamilton. And I had been coming back there for four more summers when I was from the ages 
of 13 till 16. And I've really bonded with people there. And it's also a little similar to Hamilton in the sense that the community was small, you get to know everyone. And not surprisingly, a lot of people from there end up going to NASCAR schools, which is uh, the conference of schools like Williams, Amherst, Middlebury, Bowdoin, that are in our conference and are pretty similar, very, uh, very good academically and athletically as well in all liberal arts colleges. So I was primarily looking uh, in the in the pool of these schools and assistant director there right now, he's actually a Hamilton alum. So he strongly recommended me to look at the school. And fortunately enough, that summer I was uh, visiting, uh, I was fortunate enough to have a tour uh, around colleges and uh, Hamilton was one of the stops. And the second I stepped on campus, and unlike any other school, when I walked into the admissions office, uh, it's just like the warmth that I felt and and the welcome because like the, the, the lady first asked me, would you mind, would you want a cup of coffee or like tea, anything else that you want? And I wasn't the only person there. That's the most surprising part uh, on the tour at that time. There were like 20 other students. So definitely felt the warmth. And then I also got lucky with the timing because a lot of students were moving in. So I really got to feel what, what, what the actual life campus is like. And there was just so much student energy. The weather was beautiful. And I was like, wow, I really want that. And a lot of things also resembled my camp experience in a sense that we were just like the beautiful scenery that I have. And as you walk on campus, you just see students like, talk to each other and there's just so much this young energy that you just I wanted to be part of and next year I uh, I applied and um, here I am and just and that's been the, the best four years I've had in my life and it's it's kind of sad to part with this in six six uh, weeks but I'm definitely still trying to make most of uh, what I have left so yeah a bittersweet transition absolutely because of course you want to make sure you're ready to pursue that future and everything afterwards but um it is a pretty fun place to go particularly if you're interested in um uh, beautiful locations and it's something similar to new hampshire i guess a little bit arguable but um we definitely are very very blessed with our scenic surroundings um so we want to try and see just really quick if lisa's um, sound can work so give her the opportunity to introduce herself just for a moment let's try again lisa Okay, you are muted this time, so we can see that you are muted, probably on both. Okay, try that. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, yay. Okay. Can you hear me Yes. through the computer? Yep, okay. absolutely, we're good to go. Great, you can hear me now. Yes, yes. So, but I can't hear you. Uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, my name is Lisa Baker. I'm a career advisor. I made the transition from private industry to the to higher education about four years ago and absolutely love it. After working in IT for more than 20 years, where I worked on uh, international projects and uh, global infrastructure for um, corporate IT in different companies. I joined the Hamilton Career Center and I can't tell you how much fun I have talking with students from, uh, from all over the world. And uh, I'm excited and congratulations also on your acceptance and um, yeah. Thank you so much. I really uh, appreciate that. I'm sorry for the tech issues. So I know our team is trying very hard to solve them behind the scenes. Um, nothing like a little excitement to start off a Wednesday. Um, so Hershina, um, so let's come back to the same question. Um, so talk a little bit about um, how did you find Hamilton and what made you decide to enroll? Sure. Well, I actually just Googled small liberal arts colleges in the U.S. I think that's a very common way for people Google to find is a very powerful to arts school. <laughs> but also the why I looked for small liberal arts school was because my sister also came to Hamilton. She was class of 2016 and I've heard only good things about Hamilton. So I got really excited about it and I was like, I want to join that small community as well. I want the same experience and that was definitely a big factor of why I chose Hamilton. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So let's let's talk a little, a little bit about today's topic, right, which is about career opportunities. Now, I think that a lot of students join our population and they're kind of at different phases. Some students say, look, I already know what I want to do when I graduate. I have a plan. And other students say, I, I'm just not sure. I'm looking for opportunities. 
Um, so um, Hershin and Jafar, maybe we start with Hershina. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about what was the first time you started thinking about your career opportunities? Did you come with like, I'm sure I want to do policy research or is that something you discovered during your time? Yeah, the, the policy research aspect definitely came later, but uh, I feel like I'm an odd case in the sense that I wanted to become to be an economist in high school, even before I knew what it meant to be an economist. Like, I'm going to be an economist. <laughs> I don't think I You're know good. about it now, but I'm going to find out. Um, so I was interested in that and development for sure, but I, Hamilton experiences really, really shaped my career trajectory right now, for sure. Ever since the first class I took with Professor Balkan on economic development, that class really informed my interest in research overall, because also economics research is not a track that a lot of Hamilton students choose if they're in the economics department. So I was very fortunate to have, first of all, the classes and also incredible mentorship from the faculty at Hamilton who would guide me to that research track. So that was very helpful and they helped me. The research experiences helped form my interest in migration. The summer internship experience helped form my interest in the research methods. And now everything comes together with my position right now at the Youth Policy Lab and really form like, right now I'm sure that I'm interested in research and I'm interested in research in migration and development. And that's why I'm so confident when I'm going to pursue it in graduate studies. So all of these stages really help me explore what field I'm interested in. And also I networked a lot. Ever since I came to Hamilton from like day one, I networked uh, with everyone because I wanted to get an idea of what the job was, um, what, what is it to be an economist or even working in the research sphere and the policy sphere. So um, that's still something I would definitely recommend to anyone at any stage of their life or career to just network and get to know more information about a role you're interested in. Networking, of course, is one of those challenges, right? Where everyone is like, I know I should be doing this, but how do I actually do that, particularly when so much of it is virtual at this moment? So maybe we'll come back to that idea because I know for me personally, networking is something where I'm like, oh, it's a little intimidating. I understand its importance, but for sure. Um, so Jafar, uh, same question. So uh, when you came to Hamilton, um, I know, uh, were you really confident that you knew what you want to do with your career? What At what point did you start actually thinking, what's my career going to be when I graduate? Yeah, totally. And um, now I went to Hamilton, no, like having a vague idea what I wanted to do because, well, I already knew what I want to major in. Uh, it's, it was going to be always going to be math and econ. And I also, also before even coming to Hamilton, I had always been interested in like reading news in the market. So I knew I wanted to do something with finance, but nothing specific. And finance is so broadly defined. So you just can't really pinpoint and like choose something randomly. It really has to tailor your needs uh, and interests. So yeah, my freshman year, I didn't really, I'm guilty of that, didn't really take advantage of any of the <laughs> career opportunities, was kind of going with the flow, getting to know the college and like building relationships with people here. And like, I also was playing tennis a lot. So freshman year, I was kind of slow in this, but in the summer between, I was like, okay, I'm here, Hamilton, and there's gotta be, it has to, it has to translate into something and you know just trying to make most of um, my experience here and one of the things you'll be seeing here is um, every week pretty much there will be job opportunity like uh, job fairs and like um, and webinars or conferences that you can see and attend but organized by the career center and I always kind of skip them but starting sophomore year I started to pay more more attention to those and uh, also speaking of networking don't underestimate uh, your networking with fellow students. You learn so much by talking to your fellow students. And actually, my roommate, who, he was the one who uh, actually shaped my um, my uh, exact interest in finance. And that was more, uh, it had to be more with, uh, with investment banking. And he was actually quite knowledgeable because um, he had attended all the Career Center events. So I, I was certainly able to use him as a resource and hear some of the challenges, what he had. And this is like one of the advantages of having this residential experience at Hamilton is that you get close with people around you and uh, you learn so much by them as much as you, you would learn from alumni and uh, career advisors. So uh, that's, I think, was the tipping point for me when I started like uh, pressing harder and actually pursuing uh, some job opportunities. 
it's definitely a good tip. So if you miss out on all of the first year career yeah. great services by the career center, at least talk to your roommate who hopefully would also have gone. So that's a good backup for sure. Um, um, Anna, yeah. if I can just jump in real quick, Jafar just made me think of another opportunity that's just amazing at Hamilton is the alumni network, especially in New York and Boston and the East Coast cities. I was very fortunate to do the New York City program at Hamilton and just the opportunities to meet the alums there uh, in finance and in any of the industry that you're interested in is just amazing and something I think that's very unique to Hamilton. Can you tell us just for a moment, because it's a great topic, um, just what the New York City semester was and what was your experience with that semester? Yeah, it was an amazing opportunity to spend a semester in New York. It was a study abroad program uh, and you spend like three months in New York, you live in an apartment right by the river. You have this amazing view of the river, the Statue of Liberty, right from your apartment, amazing wow. location in the fine district. And then you would do an internship three times a week. I used to work with the Social Science Research Council. I stuck with my research track. Uh, and But a lot of my peers would be doing being in investment banks and consulting firms, and they would be doing the internship three times a week. And then we would have classes twice a week. And we have the weekends to ourselves to explore the city. But also we would have a lot of events to network with alums. We would also have events to explore the city. We went to the opera. We went to the a basketball game. We got courtside tickets to a basketball game what? and got to see Jay-Z's <laughs> office, which was really cool. Jay-Z's <laughs> office? Like the rapper Jay-Z? Yeah, in, the, in Brooklyn Nets. He has the back <laughs> office. Yeah. That's cool. And, yeah. And you get to eat at these five-star restaurants that... It's just amazing. <laughs> wow. So uh, thank you so much for sharing about that. Just so you all know on the call, we have such programs in New York City, also in Boston and Washington, DC. So if you're interested in doing something similar to that, definitely an opportunity. But I'd love to uh, bring uh, David and Lisa in um, and talk a little bit about this idea. So our students in the call um, are early in their college process. They've all been admitted. Um, but uh, what kind of advice can you give for international students uh, when they're thinking about career preparation and particularly how it's like early in the process? What should they be thinking about at this phase? What questions can they ask? What kind of advice can you give them? Either feel free to answer. Oh, I'll go. go. Um, you know, um, the students, uh, Jafar and Hershina, um, just kind of echoed really what's important. And so let me just kind of reiterate, because they um, kind of gave, gave uh, really crucial examples of what they did that helped them to be successful. Um, most Hamilton students come to campus without a clear idea of what it is they want to do. And so one of the first things is, is to spend time exploring what your interests might be. And the sooner you do that, the sooner you're able to tap into opportunities. It's hard to do an internship um, if you don't know what it is you wanna do or what, what you might be interested in. So the first piece of advice is really to, um, you know, start exploring early, uh, engage with the career center, um, Jafar mentioned he didn't engage the first year. That, that's typical, um, but by sophomore year, it's really a time to um, key into programming. We, like Jafar mentioned, we bring alumni back to campus either in person or remotely from all sorts of career areas and start to learn what are some of the common career paths that Hamilton students um, explore and go on. Um, networking with alumni, as Hiroshina mentioned, um, is really crucial. Learning from them, learning from classmates. One of the things that's unique about Hamilton is that from day one, you will have access to our alumni directory. Um, so as soon as you walk on a campus, um, obviously you have to learn where it is and how to use it, uh, but you do have access to over 16,000 alumni. Um, and so that networking, kind of learning from uh, people who are, are working professionals is a key part of it. A lot of students shape their careers based on their academics. So obviously um, kind of keying in on academically what you're interested in, that can inform your career decision. Um, I mentioned I was a career advisor, Lisa is a career advisor. 
Um, and kind of developing that relationship early on is also important because we can be guides, coaches to you in the process. We're familiar with the resources. We understand what the process looks like. Another unique thing about Hamilton is that um, as soon as you matriculate, you are assigned a specific career advisor uh, to work with you over the course of your four years. And so you develop a relationship, we get to know you, and provided that you come in and, and, and engage with us, we're able to help you with the process. Um, and so those are some of the tips uh, that I'd have for you as, you as you think about enrolling at Hamilton. Hi, I, can you hear me now? We can hear you. Can you, you can hear me. Yay, you can hear me and I can hear you. <laughs> oh, the wonders of technology. Oh, I just wanted to echo uh, what a few people have said and that is uh, the importance of connecting with people, alumni and students, other students. And we have such a tremendously strong alumni network. David mentioned 16,000 alumni available in our alumni directory for you to talk with. And that is going to be so important to your career development. Uh, the days of applying, you know, uh, the days of uh, finding a job posting, applying, uh, receiving an uh, invitation to interview, and then getting hired, that, that process is, is, very rare. It's much more prevalent that people have a connection, learn about a company, learn about an industry, learn about an area that they're interested in, and through the power of their network, of which Hamilton has a super strong alumni network, that's how positions after graduation are secured. So really keep that in mind as you're thinking about what, uh, what your choice is. Um, that's going to be really important. Up to 80% of uh, jobs are secured through some form of networking. Well, that makes networking sound, I think we're all learning right now, networking really important, but also still a little intimidating. So maybe let's follow up on that question just for a moment. So assume for a moment that I'm an international student and I've enrolled at Hamilton College. Now I have this big directory of alumni connections. Um, what would you suggest would be like a way to start the networking conversation or start that off? How does that yeah. look? I, you know what, I, I should also say, you know, there are we have a, a, in the Career Center, we have up to, I think we have, including student staff, close to 100 people that spend most of their time just thinking about how to make this process easier for students. And if it's not easy, we want to know where the roadblocks are so we can help students move past those roadblocks. So we have a tremendous network of students that are out amongst the campus. We have two teams, one is a connect team and the other is the discovery team and they serve different functions, but uh, they really talk to students across campus and make the whole process much more approachable, much more, you know, less daunting and easier to, uh, to figure out. And of course, as David mentioned, you're assigned a career advisor and we are here dedicated to uh, making it more um, um, more, more accessible. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, we also have uh, workshops that actually uh, teach you the mechanics of networking, kind of take you through the actual steps. How do you identify people? How do you introduce yourself in an email? Um, and as Lisa mentioned, as advisors, we're, we're here to kind of coach you through the process, um, kind of help you kind of fine tune what your approach might be. And my advice is always to start with somebody, um, a classmate or maybe a recent grad, you know, um, somebody who might uh, have a, a better understanding of your situation, a recent international student that's graduated where you might have something in common. Try to pick somebody that where there's some commonality and there's some closeness in age so you don't feel like you're talking to some old person uh, who's out, been out in the field and a little bit more intimidating. <laughs> right. <laughs> But yeah. like, like good follow-up question. Thank you, yeah. Anna. Yeah. Absolutely. Jafar, did you want to add to that? Yeah, I would like to add about the alumni directory. And actually, uh, as, as, as a uh, career set, 
the career center staff member. Um, I actually walk, walk students through uh, the mechanics of how to use that alumni directory and to maximize your chances of getting response back and how to use the system and the new interface. And uh, would also like to point out that just about a month ago, we launched this new interface for this alumni directory and it's, it's awesome. It's like having premium uh, lifelong uh, LinkedIn premium account or something it's, it's 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 great it's so easy to use and you can see the people on the map and uh it just it's everything out there for you and then the resources that will walk you through how to use that so um it's great thank you thank you for adding that and i think that's kind of that's kind of indicative a little bit of hamilton college i know we spend a lot of time talking about uh open uh curriculum we talk about uh, career resources and research and oftentimes it can be that sounds so exciting but how do i navigate it so the important thing that we do here here at Hamilton is make sure that you have resources to rely on, whether they are student uh, support resources, uh, student staff members such as Jafar, uh, recent alums such as Hershina, and of course our wonderful staff, including uh, Lisa and David. Um, so, uh, yeah, David. Yeah. Um, to that point, uh, I don't. I don't think we're going to address this formally because we're not um, all that familiar with it because it's a brand new program. But there are so many resources, so many possibilities. It can be overwhelming. How do you find out about them? Who do you go to? Who do you talk to? Um, we're about to initiate a brand new advising program called Alex, um, and you will be assigned an Alex advisor, and that advisor is is responsible for putting you in touch with the different resources on campus, whether it be a career resource, an academic resource, um, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, uh, they're, they're kind of gonna be your guides to help you know who's the person that you need to talk to to answer a particular question or to help you learn about an opportunity. So again, uh, you'll be the first class that will have an assigned Alex advisor. Um, and, and again, the goal is to help you learn what all the different options and opportunities are when it can be quite overwhelming and you don't know where to go. So I just thought I'd put that plug in. Um, it's a brand new program, uh, still, still learning about what it's gonna look like. Thank you for that. We are all really excited about the new Alex advising system. And just as you said, David, um, oftentimes when we're navigating, particularly if you think about coming to a full new country, you have full new culture, you have all these things going on, as well as getting to learn uh, what are the opportunities at a school, it's easy to be worried. Am I going to miss out because I'm not asking the right question or I'm not talking to the right person, right? I'm sure we all have that concern. Um, so the idea for the Alex advisor is it's going to be someone who's going to meet with you one-on-one, -on -one, um, get to know you very well, and make sure that you never miss an opportunity because you're not asking the right question or interacting with the right person. So the idea is kind of like a one-stop shop to make sure that you have um, the opportunities to maximize your time here at Hamilton. We have resources, but if you're not sure what they are, what to ask, it can be hard to approach them. Um, so I know one of the things we were talking about is how important it is to connect with recent alums who have something in common. Well, we're super lucky that we have Hershina on the call today, um, who is a recent international alum from Hamilton. So I want to talk a little bit uh, with Hershina. Now, you mentioned a little bit about some of the things that you're doing um, right now, but I know another thing that you are very involved with is our alumni mentorship program for international students. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Um, how does that work with current students? Um, just uh, how did that start? But we'd love to know more about that resource. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, this is a very recent program and it must have been around this time last year that COVID started and my friends and I, all class of 2019, incredibly smart, talented women were all chatting about COVID and how we recalled having struggles finding summer internships or job opportunities, uh, even in a regular job market without COVID. And we could only imagine how hard it was going to be with COVID. And we wanted to do something to help international students feel that their summer is being productive despite COVID. And the idea we came up with was the International Alumni Mentorship Program. We had the idea of getting a list of mentors and that's where we just reached out to international students or students overall who just graduated and they were more than willing to help students on campus. So we got a list of mentors, we reached out to current students and I believe Jafar was one of the mentees this year in our pilot program. And we match them based on their interest in jobs, uh, their majors, 
um, their availability and other different factors. So we just, I think we had around 30 pairs of mentors and mentees. And we just did it for a 10 week, it was a 10 week long summer program where the mentors and mentees would meet at first and then set their own schedule from then. It was very flexible. Um, and we didn't really think of the structure then, but it was really a way for international students to learn more about networking, about career resources, shadowing, a day in your life as whatever role the mentor is in. Honestly, any resources, resume work, interview prep, anything that your mentor could help you with, your mentor, your mentor is designed to help you for that summer. So the pilot program went really well. We sent a survey at the end of it to get some feedback. We got really good feedback for the program and uh, we put some of that together, sent it to Dean Harrison and to Hamilton folks. Um, and we saw through the feedback that there's a lot of value for that program, especially because there is, I'm gonna be very honest about this, the job market or internship market for international students is a little bit tougher to break in than a regular job market for American students because of visa issues and there may be other restrictions. And international students often feel the pressure to make their summer productive. Um, so they saw a lot of value in that program as a way to make that summer productive, even a little bit, just by having a mentor to keep you on track and set goals for maybe the next year or so. So we really believe that this program has immense value. And uh, yeah, I hope that I hope that this becomes a long-term program. Actually, Anna, I would love to know from you or from our career center colleagues, if you guys have any more information about the program or its long-term prospects. So I think we definitely have conversations on, definitely have conversations offline and I'll make sure that you and I, we talk about this uh, definitely starting this week and next week because I agree with you. I think it's super valuable, but I would, I would really love to hear from Jafar as well since he did participate as one of the mentees. Um, Jafar, can you talk to us a little bit about what your experience was there? Maybe a little bit who your mentor was and how you found the program over the summer. Uh, it was actually my freshman year, I think, uh, when I was paired with uh, with a mentor, and it's just a student that you feel comfortable, like that you that the that the process matches you with, and you, you should be comfortable like talking to them about any points about college life, about career opportunities. So yeah, that was definitely another point of uh, contact that I had, and uh, but after that, I, my sophomore year. Um, I will talk about it later, but the, the structure for my uh, job that I wanted to get break into uh, had a very had a very structural uh, process of applying. So, um, and from then I was able to tap in the career uh, resources and opportunities in ha at Hamilton that were available pretty much for everyone. Because this specific job uh, is it's. Um, it's one actually that sponsors both international students and domestic students. So I didn't, there wasn't that much of a division between necessarily international and domestic. So I was able to go kind of with the flow. Um, yeah. But, Thanks. and after that, I didn't really participate that much with the program, but I would certainly love to hear how it's going right now as well. And I can do some digging. So I know people who are in the program. So, yeah. So, um, so then let's uh, transition a little bit because you were talking about the fact that we've been indicating career and finance, potentially different types yeah. of areas. So let's talk then, uh, Jafar, uh, do you have plans post-graduation? I know that's like a, a kind of <laughs> a question that everybody's asking you right now, um, but what types of uh, plans do you have for after graduation? So yeah, I'll be heading to New York City to work for Deutsche Bank as an analyst in their investment banking division. And uh, yeah, and banking, so generally finance and tech fields and research are usually the ones that sponsor international students and a little easier to get into um, compared, compared to other industries. Um, and yeah, Hamilton has prepared me really well for, for that. And as I said, it has a certain structure how to get into investment banking. Um, so it starts your sophomore year. I started heavy networking my sophomore spring. And again, I didn't feel this division, oh, you should be only networking with national students or use only resources available to international students. Not at all. I was reaching out to all alums and everyone was super responsive. And Hamilton historically has very strong presence of Hamilton alums in the investment banking sector. So every semester we have banks come here on campus and we have people there that are high up, uh, very senior and uh, hold leaders, leadership positions. Just to mention that, for example, in Deutsche Bank, um, 
our alum runs their whole investment uh, banking division. And for Goldman Sachs, for example, the CEO is another alum of ours. Uh, so that really helps because alums usually try to stay in touch with Hamilton and are interested in bringing and having that pipeline. So that helped me a lot. And uh, and yeah, for my I, I was able to secure that internship for my juniors junior summer. And after that, usually that translates into a full-time offer if you do everything right. So I guess I was doing something right. So I was able to get that return offer. And that was definitely one uh, less thing to worry about my senior year, just knowing that you'll be uh, employed after graduation. So that was a, lot, a huge lift off of my shoulders. Um, but yeah, and I think Hamilton really prepares you well, as I mentioned, in three ways. And, and first, Hamilton puts a huge emphasis on your communication skills. And as you as you probably know, there's a writing intensive requirement. And that really teaches you how to put your thoughts in a very cohesive way and how to communicate your right. You can be a genius, but it's all good for nothing if you cannot deliver that message. And Hamilton really emphasizes that. And in a career like investment banking, that is not particularly looking for only finance majors, but to broad uh, perspective and diverse majors. So that can really come in handy. Uh, and then second, I would also say, some I, I've noticed through my past internships that it's not always the case that student like people of our age know exactly how to communicate with uh, people in their 40s or 50s, like more senior people. And I think Hamilton, by having such small classrooms and like this, oh, for classes, you will most certainly have requirements to meet with your professors one on one. And that's so you're always ahead of the game, you're always interacting with students. So once you're actually there in the job, you know how to interact with people of older age. And then three, I think um, just you will be exposed to so many new uh, classes here that even though you you may be majoring and like in a very narrow field, but you will learn how to how to how to juggle three things at once and learn quickly. And that just such a necessary skill for honestly any job that you might enter. So that was a little long, but that's that's how I got there. Not well, thorough, absolutely, and helpful. I think um, I love talking about the different aspects and realizing that um, finding a great job, such as the one you have uh, confirmed for this next, uh, for after you graduate, it's never going to be based on just one thing, right? It's a combination of your experiences and your preparation. So wonderful here. I know, Lisa, you wanted to add something on this topic. Um, you are muted right now. I was unmuted. I just unmuted okay. myself. Okay. Uh, yeah, he was just making uh, such an important point about uh, the importance of communication across multi, you know, different age groups and different demographics. And I just loved his point. I want to, you know, that's great that he's had that experience. I, I believe also that Hamilton does a great job in preparing students to go out and and really form relationships in the workplace with people of many different generations and different demographics. So that that's very, very important. I think we do have a good opportunity for follow up, though, because one of the topics we've been covering a little bit is the fact that uh, the reality of studying in the United States means oftentimes there are visa uh, issues that we need to take into consideration, right? So I'd love to then talk with either David or Lisa, whichever would like to address it. Um, we've been talking about the fact that um, there are some additional challenges students need to know. So can you talk a little bit about some of the opportunities that are available for students? Is everything going to be based on citizenship? How do we how do we navigate that type of support from the Career Center? I can tackle that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> one of the most important people you'll get to know um, as an international student is Dean Allen Harrison. Um, he is, so to speak, the guru of understanding visa issues when it comes to working in the United States. And basically, there are two ways um, that, that you will be authorized to, uh, to work uh, through an internship or otherwise. And that is either through a, a, a program called optional practical training or curricular practical training, OPT, CPT. Um, CPT um, requires that you have an opportunity that somehow is tied to your academic uh, program at Hamilton. And, and Dean Harrison will work with you to try to figure out how to make that happen, how to make that um, connection between what it is you're studying and a particular internship opportunity. Um, to my knowledge, I mean, there, 
I think it's fair to say that post-graduation jobs are a little bit more restrictive than internships. Uh, usually internships only say, um, you know, you need to be eligible to, to work in the United States, you need to be a student. Um, and as long as you can um, get that authorization from the INS um, to, to be able to have an internship, and I have not heard of a situation where that could not happen, um, you should be fine. I, I also do want to mention a couple of other things. A lot of students, actual international students, actually find opportunities at Hamilton uh, during the summer. And for those opportunities, you don't necessarily need clearance um, kind of on, on, a, on a legal basis. Um, we have students that are doing science research, we have students that are doing social science research through the Emerson Grant Program. Um, so there are opportunities to um, engage in career exploration and career um, experiences right here at Hamilton. Um, and that's especially true maybe even your first year where it's, it's tough for any first year student to get an internship and even tougher for an international student. Um, and so a lot of international students stay on campus for their first summer and find some kind of opportunity. We also have a program that's just, just started and I saw that we had a number of international students uh, that were able to take advantage of this. And we coined it as SNAP internships. And what they were, we, we went out to our alumni and said, hey, could you um, help provide students with some kind of short-term project um, where they can learn about a career field, where they can develop some skills? And they weren't overly formal, they were short-term, and um, but they were an opportunity to, to gain some skills. We had a number of international students. Um, I'm looking at it now, there was a program, um, one call, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this, Sapir Aude Consortium. And two international students kind of did that virtual kind of remote um, internship where kind of they started learning some of the basics of um, investment research. And these were these opportunities were brought to students through alumni. So kind of just uh, some examples of some other types of possibilities that don't necessarily fit a formal um, summer internship program, but still are valuable experiences. Um, so between, you know, connecting with Dean Harrison, working with the Career Center, being aware of other non-traditional opportunities, um, you know, for the most part, I think that students can find uh, things to do in the summer. Uh, both Jafar and Sheena um, kind of mentioned the opportunities they found. Uh, it takes work. You got to start early. Um, but uh, there are opportunities out there. Thank you for talking about that. I know also uh, the idea of on David, do you want to employment uh, is also I just want yeah. Sorry, I just want to add one thing about on-campus employment. Um, so we do have um, three uh, international students this summer who are going to be working for us as tour guides. So here in the admission office, we do hire several um, undergraduate students and three out of our 10 tour guides who are working for us this summer are international students. So they're going to be from Thailand, um, from China, and um, the last one is from, oh, I'm blanking right now. Oh, uh, Hungary. So um, three different locations that we're excited to have students with us. But Lisa, I apologize. I uh, cut you off. One of those challenges. Again. And I apologize as well. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Sometimes happens on these Zoom calls. But uh, David, I just wondered if you wanted to mention also going global. We Sure. Yeah. Uh, Go. Going Global is a um, um, portal, a resource that we subscribe to. Um, um, and what it does, especially for international students that are looking to stay in the United States after graduating, it uh, has a wealth of information of companies that sponsor students for HB1 visas, which is really kind of what, what needs to happen uh, for students to have an uh, extended stay in the United States. And so this resource will let you know who are those companies out there that are receptive to international students and sponsoring them. I um, want to mention one other thing kind of that's related. Uh, we have an alum whose name is Helen Conrad. She is an immigration attorney and she comes to campus each year to talk to international students about some of those tricky immigration issues. Uh, she's offered to work with students and she um, really has in-depth understanding of how the system works and offers that kind of knowledge and as a resource for students. Uh, each year, the 
kind of uh, laws and regulations regarding kind of staying in the United States and being eligible for HB1 visas change. And so it gets kind of complicated. And sometimes you need someone that has her expertise to kind of navigate the system. And so she's a wonderful resource and again, comes to campus each year. So again, kind of with that idea of there's a lot going on, but Hamilton is going to have resources for you to help you make sure you have the practical information that you need. So um, I really appreciate that because I know I'm sure that's something that is on the mind of us students today is um, thinking about all of those types of things. So really, really appreciate adding that. Now we are getting uh, close towards the end of today's session. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about some re more reflective type questions. Um, so um, for Hershina specifically, because you are um, now part of our international alumni uh, mentorship network. You're also about to enter grad school. You've also had some really interesting work in policy. Um, if you can talk a little bit about uh, what was the best piece of advice you received, um, which really has helped you for this uh, current trajectory that you're on. Um, what was that advice and um, why was it so meaningful? That's a great question. I got a lot of good advice along the way. But I think one that really stuck with me was, uh, this is going to sound cheesy, but the one that really stuck with me is follow your own path, not the path that others choose for you. And I think that's very applicable, especially for international students, because I've read this from a, multi a number of my peers as well. But like I said, uh, you will encounter many challenges on your way. Um, they, they can be challenges to get job opportunities. They, you might meet people along the way who would say, oh, you might not be able to do something because of your accent. These are things I've heard and, or, or you shouldn't pursue your study in class because you might not be able to do it. And these unfortunately happen. And something that I've learned is if you're truly, truly passionate about something, don't let anyone tell you otherwise, just follow your dreams. You can do it. If you're here in this call right now. This is proof enough that you can do anything you want. But, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think that, that definitely stuck there. with me. And it's strange because even now after Hamilton, I still hear, uh, unfortunately, things that happen like that, that shouldn't be. Um, yeah. So just follow your passions. So Jafar, I think the same question. Um, so you're um, just starting out in your career, but um, you've also uh, have a type of role that I think is hopefully going to be really full of opportunity for you. What was the best piece of advice you've got that's helped you? I think I would definitely echo that for Sheena, that definitely stay in your path, stay, stay gritty and pursue what you want. And I would also, the, one of the advices I, I received is um, my, my, one of my first coffee chats didn't end well. And I thought that was, that's it. They're gonna put me on their, I don't know, blacklist. Exactly, <laughs> blacklist. Cause I mean, at, at the end of the day, it was my fault. I didn't go there prepared. So, um, but yeah, I thought my opportunities there were, were canceled that's it but i think i think but trying again it's, it's 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 just persisting that's an important factor and actually to let you know that's how i got into hamilton as well my first uh first year i didn't get in um i got waitlisted but you know persisted applied early um and here i am so definitely don't don't let some some of the so so to speak failures discourage you because um it's 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 a struggle it's, it's a path to get there but if you truly believe that you, that's something that belongs to you, you you should be pursuing that thank you so much for adding that anecdote as well i know a lot of people again we are all so worried if it doesn't work out the first time but really a lot of life is just getting up and trying again and making sure that you're working hard for those opportunities and again we're learning networking, right? Um, so um, then uh, I'd love to turn over then to uh, David and Lisa. Additional thoughts about what our international students should be asking and thinking about um, as they're preparing, or maybe let's change it and say, as they're selecting. Now, the likelihood of students on this call is since they're such talented, academically impressive students, they, some of them probably have several options to choose from. So if they're thinking about um, uh, selecting college, what should they really be thinking about when preparing for careers? Go ahead, Lisa. <laughs> Um, I just want to make sure I was unmuted. What, so the, uh, what should they really be thinking about when they're preparing for career? 
Right. So uh, if they're thinking about selecting yeah. their college, um, what questions should they be asking and thinking about when they make that decision as regarded to career preparation? I, I would, you know, back to what I was saying earlier, I would pay particular attention to the availability of connecting with alumni. Um, you know, I, I, in preparation for this call, I took a look at uh, some of the international students that I've worked before, and every single one of them had had uh, has had uh, really fantastic mentorship and uh, conversations with our alumni. Um, and I just think that has been a really important factor in, in the, the, you know, the four or five students that came to mind as I was preparing for this call, those were important things to their, their moving their career forward. So I would be thinking about that. Um, I'll mention two things, and one really isn't career related, but I, I, in some respects, I think it's more important than career related. And that is basically what's the intuitive sense you have of Hamilton and its culture and its people. Um, you want to make sure it's a good fit for you. Um, I remember when I took my two daughters to visit different campuses. Um, you you got to feel for the people, the program, the 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 environment, and I think that's pr the top thing. Um, you know, we can offer all the services and 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 opportunities, but if it's not a good fit for you, if you don't feel like you could be at home here, um, the other things probably are going to be secondary. So first and foremost, you know, through all your interactions, uh, through the people you meet from what you hear, from what you read, you wanna make sure that ha Hamilton represents a place where you think you can thrive, okay? Uh, but that might be uh, obvious. Um, and then just secondary, uh, we've kind of out you know, laid out um, all the different resources. As you kind of think about different places that you're considering, what are the resources that are available to you? Uh, what kind of support you'll get along the way? Um, and there are a lot of different things that we've talked about. And, and so I would keep those in mind um, as you make your decision as well. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Um, so I know we have about one minute left, but I'd love to hear um, everyone, your short, very concise. Uh, what is a final piece of advice you have for students on our panel as they are making that important decision about which college to select? Um, let's start with Roshina. Yeah, I have one ready. I'm going to echo what David said, the community. Take a look at the community you're about to join, if it fits you on a personal level, academic level, and professional level. Uh, personal level, I mean, just look at the your cohort, the friends you're going to be making, academic level, look at your faculty. Um, I know some of my best mentors have been faculty at Hamilton. And because you get that one-to-one -one interaction, they really become mentors for you for anything in life, from academic to a sounding board for your personal like troubles at Hamilton. So, and professional career center, you have amazing resources that you can make yourself uh, that would help you push your professional life forward. And um, yeah, those are the three things I would consider. Thank you, thank you. And Jafar, same question. Yeah, totally. And so the, the reason why you got admitted to Hamilton is that because Hamilton thinks you've got this tremendous potential that you, you're about to unleash. And for you to figure out is, what is that place that will provide you the opportunity to uh, to make most out of your potential, let it uh, unleash. So I think that was on the top of my mind. And I was looking through the support and my interactions even before Hamilton with some of the students that I got and like with the Dean of International Students and to see what support would I get. Uh, but, and it all kind of tied together and uh, that seemed the place where I could thrive as, as David mentioned. So definitely uh, weigh in on that as well. Thank you, thank you. And Lisa, a piece of advice. Oh, I'm going to give you my own personal life motto, um, which is let's just see, uh, get curious about your own capabilities and what's possible for you if you go for it. And that's how I personally, that's my own personal motto for me. And so I'm sharing that with you. Let's just see, I encourage you to go for it and um, see what's possible for yourself. You don't know until you go for it. Thank you, thank you. And David? Trust your intuition. Trust your intuition. 
brief, concise, to the point, I love it. Um, for me, my final piece of advice is going to be, don't hesitate to ask, right? So oftentimes we feel shy, like I've emailed this person three times already, they don't wanna hear from me, we do. We wanna hear from you and we wanna know um, what is it do you need to be connected to an additional alumni? Do you wanna be connected to a student in a major in an academic area? We wanna connect you, but of course, in order to do so, you need to, we need to know what you wanna uh, connect with. So ask um, and do this with Hamilton, but do it also with any other colleges that you're considering and realize that um, if they have resources, they should be able to connect you. And it's all about making sure that you can really picture your life here. But part of that is gonna be asking those questions that are unique to you. So so if you have more things that you want to ask us, you can, of course, reach out to us at admission at hamilton.edu. We're really happy to connect you with all types of resources across campus. You can also reach out to me directly. I think all of you have my email address since we've been in contact, but ays at hamilton.edu. Now, I also encourage you to continue checking back to that hamilton.edu slash explore page because we are going to do a variety of continuing virtual events. But with that said, we wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much again um, for taking the time um, to spend with us today to learn more about career opportunities at Hamilton. And thank you as always to our wonderful panelists. I think we can all agree this was a really, really exciting session. I really appreciate all of you so much. Thank you for all you do to continue supporting our community and our Hamilton here. Um, and uh, let's keep conversations going. Uh, and from wherever you are, we hope that you have a great week and go Continentals, right? Go Continentals. Thank you so much.